Hi there, and thanks for coming back to the second episode where we are looking into how we can make a do-it-yourself raw panel integration. We are basing it on an Arduino-like board from uh, Freetronics and Ethermega. It has Ethernet connection, it has standard power input, and also USB to uh, be programmed from the Arduino um, environment over here. And uh, this in this video, we'll uh, not look at the source code just yet, but we'll look at how is it that raw panel actually works. Because in the first episode, we were looking at reactor that was able to connect to the panel. This is panel ID 2. It doesn't have a name. But if we go to configuration, we can see this abstract representation of this chipboard electronic setup. And if I press the button, uh, let me just show you if I enable this one. You can see that it is actually listening to these triggers and apparently it's also doing stuff. It is actually already, from the first video I took you through, connected to an ATEM switcher. So let me show you what happens on the ATEM switcher if we uh, operate these different things. So you see, this is a cut button. We set it up to be cut. Over here, we set this one up to rotate the audio state of input number one. I actually set this one up to adjust the volume of input number two. And we also had over here in the switcher section, the fader was set up to be a transition fader. We have this one that would be the upstream key right there. So just watch out for that one. And it has feedback as well. And if you notice this one, it is a tally LED that shows you the tally state of input number two. So if I move, no, wait, it's actually not true. It's, it, it is input number one. So uh, input number one is currently, let me see. No, it's input number three. Sorry about that. It is input number three, but that is also assigned to this upstream key. This is why it goes on when the upstream key is enabled, because the upstream key has set camera number three as the fill source. But if I set this one for program, and if I press my cut button, you can see it goes forth and back between red and green for the correct tally indication. This relay was set up to indicate if input number or camera number one is on program. So you see this one will be turned off this relay when I move away from uh, camera number one on program. So that was a basic introduction to the setup we did here. In the first video, we explored how to create this on a configuration of our own, adding these seven behaviors and how to program them from the inspector tab. So it was all pretty easy based on this abstract representation of a panel. See, normally in my videos, you will see that I put in real professional Skyhawk broadcast panels. This is the hardware we sell. So please buy some of these. You can supplement with your own stuff like this one because you probably want sometimes to make your own electronics for game shows, etc. But these will typically look much more like the panel when you add them inside Reactor. And an example of that would be if we go to the home screen here and I want to add a panel that I could also hook up, then we could take the Rack Fusion Live that I just showed you. And if I put this one in, you see the panel is here and it would look like basically this one alongside. But both of these can actually be programmed from within the same environment. So in this case, um, the usually when you pull in a panel like that one, it will be set up with a new configuration on its own. So it just took one that is already connected to the ATEM switcher. But just like I did with this one, I can also create a custom configuration for that. Well, let's call it blah and just create it. So now we have this custom configuration. If I go in here, then we see on blah, I can now start mapping my buttons just like I did for my Arduino panel. Really no difference here. So just this one, search up that, type in cut to find the cut behavior from the ATEM switcher, pick ME1, sub submit. And now actually down here on this button, we would have a cut button on the Rack Fusion Live, just like this button was assigned to the cut parameter. You see, that is actually the same. I've just done, regardless of the panel is the one or the other, it is assigned to that cut parameter. Now, the thing is, a Rack Fusion Live would be a raw panel device talking to Reactor, and so is our Arduino. So the question is, how does that really work? And I will take you behind the scenes on that one. I want you to go to our GitHub repository because that's a great resource for information about this. In the support section, you'll find manuals. And one of the manuals that is found inside the Skahoy folder is the raw panel v2 manual. This is a PDF file that is indispensable when it comes to working with the raw panel protocol. So we could download this and use that to uh, see what is the commands looking like and so on. You can see this is examples of the commands from the introduction. So that's a nice reference to have. 
Let's just go back once and then maybe I can open a new tab to have it available here. There's other things I want to show you inside and that is in the support section again. All the files for this project is in files. Do it yourself Arduino raw panel. So this is where you find stuff like, let me just see, we have a nice schematic here of what we have actually put together with all the components. Sorry about the size, but this is representing the uh, relay, the LED on that, the dome button, the, uh, the the two buttons and so on. So we have this this schematic um, um, drawing. We also have a real schematic here. So you can see how it's all put together and we have the source code of the project. So, uh, and, by, and also a, an RTF file with some notes inside of this one, you'll find the actual Arduino sketch that we are using, the one that you saw me quickly show right here. And uh, so all that information is available as open source uh, on, on this website to get you guys started, to create your own uh, little electronic project and link it into uh, Reactor to connect it to ATEM switches, cameras and whatnot. So you can basically combine it any way you want. That's really powerful. And then finally, there's one thing that we'll be looking at later. That is, if we look inside repositories and we search raw panel, then, oops, panel, then I guess we'll have a number of repositories related to raw panel. And the one that we will use later would be raw panel explorer. And there you go into releases and then you download the latest release for your platform. I downloaded the one for Mac and you can do it for Windows or for Linux if you want. And then you have a little uh, help application that will be uh, that will be very useful uh, at a later point. OK, so the, um, the one thing about raw panel is that it is uh, network based. So you see how the Ethermega is actually connected over network to the uh, Blue Pill server. And I know the IP address, or if I forgot it, I could also check it over here because if I go in to panel ID2, which is our panel. Yeah, please, let's just go there. Okay. Yeah, there we go. This is the IP address. All right, perfect. And it's probably on the default. Uh, so I, I'll use NC Netcat, type in the IP address, and then use the port 9923 and I'm apparently connected to something. So if you type in list, which is one of the most basic raw panel commands, it will tell you information about the panel we are connected to. And the Arduino we have made responds back with underscore model equals custom Arduino. So this is a name that I have given it. Using undersc uh, custom underscore as the model name is useful because it is supposed to be how you name a panel, which is like ad hoc, like this one. Serial number is some random string that I've put in. Version is up to you. Name my Arduino raw panel is also up to you. That's the, the friendly name of the panel. Platform is custom. Uh, panel type is a physical panel. We can have virtual panels as well. It supports ASCII and nothing else. There are bi binary formats and so on. And it has a maximum of four clients. Actually, four clients means that I should be able to connect to it over here in a second terminal. So I can type in list and you see the same is also the case here. If I now press a button on the panel, you see that I receive an information and this is how raw panel works. I receive this string that hardware component one was held down, hardware component one is released. And once in a while, you also see that it sends a ping command that is like a keep alive signal, which you need to respond to by ACK or reactor response by ACK and uh, acknowledge. And that is useful to make sure that connections are taken down if those are not arriving. So that, that's a good thing. Now, if I press another one, you can see that it's hardware component number two. If I press this one, it's hardware component number three. If I rotate this one, you see it's hardware component 11, which is sending a different type of string, namely apps, which is absolute value. This is a value between zero and 1000. And the same with this one, zero and 1000. If I, and then I'm basically out of hardware components that will send me stuff. But you see that we have the relay and we also have the LED strip that can light up. And the way I can manipulate that would be like, um, let me see, I need to um, know the number actually. Oh, okay, we'll do that later because I'll show you the, the raw panel explorer tool is the one that can connect to it and then it can extract information about what are the features that we can manipulate. So that, that is kind of the next step. But I wanted to show you how by Ethernet we can connect to the um, to the device here and uh, probably that, that would probably be that limit of... See, now we have 
three, we actually have four devices connected and then we should not be able to connect the next one. Unless, unless actually, ah, no, we are not. So the fourth, we could not actually. So this is just a reference to that very first message we had right there that we have a limit of four clients that we can connect. And it is because it's the Wisnet net 51 hundred chip that is running on that one. All right, so it makes sense. But that's a geeky detail, so never mind. Okay, um, yeah. Let's go to the raw panel explorer tool. Actually, I have it right here in this terminal. I downloaded this one already. And I uh, from the GitHub repo that I just showed you here, I downloaded that one. I already went through Actually, I should basically download it once again because it is a little bit horrible to see. You know, if if you're on a, you you just you just need to know that if I remove this one and then I move the one that was just downloaded here into this folder, there is a chance that if I try to run it like that one, it will say permission denied. Okay, so if you're on a Mac, probably on, on, on a Linux as well, you need to first do this change, mo um, change, change mode, uh, yeah, A plus X, so all should have execute permissions. I'll do that, okay, then I will try to run it once again. And when I do that, I get this warning and I'll use okay, it's now killed, and then you go into the settings. And in the settings, you need to look for privacy and security. And then you see this one. That one was blocked for, from use. Allow it anyway. All right. Then you can go back here. And when you're here again, you run it again. You will get another warning. And you press OK for opening. And phew, now it finally opens. Now, Raw Panel Explorer is so cool that it can scan the network for raw panel devices that announce themselves by MDNS. Zero conf, bonjour, whatever you call it. And we find four panels, actually five panels today on my network. Now, unfortunately, none of these panels is this installation because I did not go that far to integrate MDNS. But I know the IP address. So actually, if you run the raw panel explorer with a little dash help, then you get this information and you can see that you can use panel port to actually connect to it. So we will do that. We'll just type in the IP address and wait like that port. It will boot up and it will connect to the panel. It will get the topology from the panel, which is what you see right here. And then actually, if you press the buttons on the panel, you'll see that you have something called an event scope that shows you the triggers and the frequency and stuff like that. You see all this? When I turn this one around, you see I have a beautiful little graph that shows me all the data points when I move this, the same as this one. And as I, I think I noted on the first video, this fader is by mistake a logarithmic fader because it has that um, uh, fall off at the top actually. Uh, and, and, and so on, I can move on like this. But now the cool thing is if I click the relay or any of these, but the, the relay and the LED strip and the dome button has feedback as well. I would be able to turn it on and off. You can see the relay can be turned on and off by me. Now, just notice one thing. I'm actually connected to it also from Reactor. Reactor right back here. So Reactor is um, currently not knowing that I'm messing with the panel uh, from the Raw Panel Explorer because if I do stuff on the ATEM switcher as well, it would actually respond to that, right? If I, if I press the cut button, that would go forth and back and it would enable the relay once again and so on because it's also connected in here. But I am able to connect from multiple masters if I want to. This is your responsibility not to do that. But from the Raw Panel Explorer, I can manipulate that. And there's this so-called so output bit on the relay that will turn it on and off. And if I manipulate the LED strip, I can do the same. I can turn it on. I can dim it. I can turn it off. Dim it on. I can set it to amber. I can set it to red. I can set it to green. If I set it to on, I can click through all these color variations and have that reflected on the LED strip in either on or dimmed mode. So what is that on and dimmed? Well, it is because any of the components on a panel, it is useful to be able to say, this is the color that I want you to use, LED uh, RGB color. 
and I want you to be fully on, I want you to be dimmed, or I want you to be off. And instead of you having to calculate the actual dimmed version of the color, and also because dimming something can sometimes depend a little bit on how strong the LED is and how its, it's, it's, its curve is and so on, this is why we have a dimmed state that can be implemented specifically in the hardware. So what you see for the LED bar is that the dim state is actually independent on the color that we are choosing. So you, you choose the color and then now it's blue and I can turn that on and off. So it's just setting a less intensity on the blue color that I picked the last time. Finally, we have this pickup where you can actually pick a color and you can go through all kinds of colors from this one, select that and it will be output on this one or send over to the panel. So we implemented support for that in the LED strip here. If you go to the dome button, that's just the blue button. And all you can do on this one is to turn it off. Actually, it's, it's turned off. Actually, I think I want to turn the LED strip off here. Okay, so let's go back to the dome button. Maybe you can see it here. I, will, I have it off. I have it dimmed and I have it on. You should be able to see some sort of change on the video. Maybe you can't see it very clearly, but it is actually responding to that. But it doesn't matter what color I'm sending over because this is just a button. And all we did was to pulse width modulate the output of the LED inside of it. Okay, so this is a raw panel explorer. Now, if you look in, in a little further down, you see this nice little table. And in this table, you see every one of these hardware components like button one, two, dome, fader, relay, and so on, and which features they have. So look at this. The button says, we are buttons. In other words, we provide a binary input. The fader and the knob says that I am an analog component of a vertical sort. So we can move it up and down. This is a fader. I am an analog component of a rotational sort. So that's a potentiometer, right? The dome button has a mono LED, no color, it's just a mono color, but I can shade it by choosing off, dimmed, or on. The relay is a so-called output, a GPO, GPO uh, general purpose output. And that is either on or off. It doesn't have a dim state. And then finally, we have the LED strip, which is an RGB LED. So here we can send over red, green, blue values, and it should respond to that, right? So that's what we are reading out of this. There's also a description here and there's a reference to a so-called so type index. And the type index is something that is in the topology that I mentioned. The topology is sub JSON code that basically describes each of these. And you can see the two buttons are actually sharing the same type index. And the type index does multiple things. It actually determines how it is rendered up here. So having button one and two sharing the same type index uh, is natural because they look the same. They just have different names here, which is coming from this column over here. And um, everything else is basically uh, its its own topology. Um, notice a few things. The hardware IDs, generally, they are just sequential. So you go from 1 to 50 or something. I, I, I On purpose, I decided to mess it up and just choose them out of order. So we have 1, 2, 3, then 10, 12, 11, and 100. And that is just to make the point that there is no obligation actually to have hardware components sequentially numbered. There is no obligation for that. You can, you can do it like this if you want. And the same is true for the type index. These are also randomly chosen numbers because at the end of the day, they are just referring to the type index. And if you want to see what that is, then look at the topology JSON, which is pulled out of the panel. And when I said pulled out the panel, let's go back to this one because I actually mean it. So we are here. If I ask panel topology question mark, there you go. Now you receive SVG and you receive JSON data from the Arduino. And that is all that has been also sent over to render all this stuff. So everything the raw panel explorer knows about this Arduino raw panel that we have made comes from the JSON and the SVG. So the JSON is describing each of the hardware components. You can see hardware components, ID1, ID2. Here is the text for the button name. This, the XY is tens of millimeters, the location of where they are supposed to be on the abstract drawing here. Then you have the type and you have the dome button, type 2, fader, type 23, etc. So this is the list. And those type references are down to reference down to the type index object. So that would be one for the um, uh, for button one and two, and 
Then we have uh, number 10 defined, number 18, number 2 here, number 23. And if you look at the information that comes along with it, here we have a width and a height. We also have the information that this is a button. The input and the B means this is a button. This is a description of the type of uh, component it is. This is uh, the description for the LED strip. It has output uh, put RGB capabilities. It is supposed to be rendered 500 wide and, and 70 high as a rectangle. So that is a reference to how it's rendered in the topology here. Then you, you see for the vertical slider, it is the AV type. So all those things are inside this topology um, that is pulled out of the panel. And that JSON is actually inside my Arduino code. So if you scroll through this somewhere inside of here, probably over here in, this, in the main sketch, you'll find this line where it says, if somebody is asking for the panel topology, send back these two lines, which are hard-coded JSON and SVG, which I have crafted to match up with my panel. And doing that means that Reactor is able to take it in, give you those nice small primitive, graphical primitives you can click with, with labels, and then you can start configuring uh, the response to the triggers the panel is going to send over. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, what else should we be looking at here? So th the Raw Panel Explorer is a really cool tool for uh, probably the one that you would use as you're building up your Arduino-based Raw Panel and testing it with the Raw Panel uh, Explorer is a really good option before you connect it into Reactor because it will help you to send feedback and receive triggers and verify that it is all correct. I want to wrap up this video by getting back to the raw panel manual. So if you go to the tab that I opened up with the raw panel manual, this is really essential that you acquaint yourself with this document. And many of the things that we have been discussing um, without getting into real details, but the commands that you have seen, HWC, and then hash mark, um, the number of the hardware component and some response, those are documented in here. You can see that the value one means off, one, two, three is a fixed color, and four and five, what that means. You can also go to the one for coloring. And actually many of these will be immediately recognized when we get to the third episode of this one, where we'll be looking at the code written for the Arduino to interpret the raw panel protocol. So in this document, we find all these things. As an example, we just looked at panel topology. So if I search panel topology, you can see that is a command that we can send one of the ways. It asks the panel to send SVG and JSON data for topology. And this is categorized as, if we go to the head of this table, it is probably categorized as a inbound TCP command. In other words, uh, words from an external system to the Skahoy panel. And in the case of our, our prompt here, the, um, the um, Telnet connection, this is an external system connecting, just like Reactor would be. And in response to that topology, we should see that there is also a uh, an answer coming back from this one. Let me see. Yeah, we see it here. It says underscore panel topology SVG base and HVC is then being returned in response to that. And we saw that is exactly what happens because this is what the panel returned to us for the JSON data and also the SVG data. So that is also according to this document. Thanks for watching this far. In the third video, we'll be looking at the actual Arduino code that you can download from GitHub and how that works and a lot of details about that. So I'm really looking forward to taking you that final step and hopefully that will get you uh, up and running with your own electronics project that can create a, a custom raw panel and connect it to Reactor so you can create any kind of broadcast hardware integration with your homegrown electronics.